hey, it's Sol. And there's no need to look at your screen. I'm just going to be talking for a little bit. Uh, so I just read the quarterly report from Activision Blizzard, along with all the angry tweets and the news articles and all that stuff. Um, I just looked at the whole official announcement that they let go a lot of staff, like 8% of their people. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of people. Now, on the plus side for those... Oh, okay, there's no real plus side. But at least among these people that are being let go, they're getting a pretty decent severance. The labor dollars... Well, yeah, the, the, the labor, it doesn't seem to be changing. It's just being shifted. So the people who are being let go, they're considered to be non-development or administrative. Uh, they're also, I believe they said, they're deprioritizing initiatives that aren't meeting expectations. And I guess that's where the Heroes of the Storm reductions are coming from. And it's not just Blizzard segments being effective. This, th this looks like to be a thing that's totally across the board. My thoughts are really all over the place with this one because only a few years ago before I started seriously doing like videos and streaming and all that I was affected in a very similar way for the company that I used to work for uh, some of you who might have uh, talked to me enough you probably know what company this is it just doesn't seem to be very smart for me to talk about it outright here but it sucks being laid off um being laid off made me feel less than I thought that I was worth. I felt like I was uncared for. I felt that there were people above me who didn't care to understand uh, who they were affecting. That they, you know, those people up there, uh, they were just trying to please their bosses or shareholders or lining their pockets or whatever. But uh, but you know me. This is my channel. You know I'm I'm a breezy. I somehow. I somehow have made myself feel better about my own layoff by being understanding, I guess, and focusing on the facts and not the story that the emotional side of me wants to tell. It's hard to feel like it's really hard to feel like what Activision is doing seems like the right thing to do. We want to th we want to think that the company we work for is going to return the loyalty that we give them. But the thing is, once you get so big, the relationship between the company and the workers and the investors and the customers becomes so intermingled that it blurs. Like the good work that you think you're doing, it helps the company, but in turn, that risks undermining you. So, well, I'm, I'm going to give an anecdote about my layoff within the gaming industry. There are some parallels to what Activision Blizzard is pushing for today, and unsurprisingly, <laughs> I'm left a little bit more hopeful than I was yesterday. It's crazy, but anyway. Uh, the job that I had was in QA. It was in quality assurance. I was a game tester lead, and I ran a few teams to vet dozens, you know, hundreds of games for certification. So what I did was find the bugs, and I made sure that the legal text is there, that the proper logos are displayed, you know, th that sort of thing. So a few years ago, if you wanted to make a game for a certain platform, uh, making the game was obviously important, duh, uh, but that was just one step, because you had to get your game certified, and that meant having it tested or rubber stamped by, by a group of people, and the process was pretty damn crazy. So if you had a game and you wanted to get it certified, so if you had a game, you had to get it certified in North America and Latin America and Europe and Japan. And I think somewhere else, but it's been a while, so I forgot. But that meant you had to make four versions of your game. And the bulk of the code, now, now, now the bulk of the code, it was all the, pretty much the exact same stuff. There were just little teeny differences that separated the regions. When it came time to certify the game, you had to submit it to all these regions separately. And, and maybe, maybe the regions would certify it at the same time. But maybe one region, like North America or whatever, was more strict than the other because maybe there was 
a bad issue when your internet connection goes bad in North America. But the other regions who also saw this same issue, they were like, oh, you know, it's it's okay. You know, this still passes the rest of the testing. Just patch it next month or so, but, you know, we'll let you sell your game. So, so, in, this situ- so in situations like these, one region was all it took to delay this entire process. <laughs> Maybe the regions would talk it over and things would work out on our end. But other times it won't and we would have to kick the game back and tell them, hey, you got to fix this. And then you got to resubmit it and then hope it passes in each of these regions once again. It was kind of a mess. That was a really, now that's a really simple way to describe uh, that side of the work. But in short, this, this really, really pissed developers off. Because imagine if you're a big old um, studio like EA and you have your yearly sports ball, whatever game to release. You have a street date and it's going to be out in however many months. And you have a dozen versions of this game between the regions and different languages like the works. So there is a lot of red tape you had to go through to get your game to pass. And I'm not even talking about patches and DLC because that went through the same process going to all these different regions and everything. So someone had a bright idea, thanks to all the grumbling of these developers. How about you, this was the idea, like how about you just submit all of these game versions to just one region, to one team, and then that one region slash team can do all the testing that's needed to certify the game and then it can be released uh, all over the world. Surely that would be more efficient than to submit to four or five different teams who might see these bugs or read these bugs and issues differently and kick up a big ruckus and then they've got to trade all these back and forth emails and phone calls to sort things out. It's, yeah. So eventually, <laughs> eventually, at the speed of international business, uh, this process happened. It was changed. And developers were super happy. They could spend more of their stress time making games than fighting over why one country whines more about the correct color of a controller icon. True story. And it gave my company more bandwidth to better its relationships with these developers. And yeah, everyone's happy. But the last thing left to do was to reassess what to do in the fallout of this. Because now you have all these teams that did the same thing. And now you didn't need four or five of these teams all over the world. You just needed one. So my contributions to this company were, I suppose, I guess they were administrative. And apparently they were redundant. I thought I did good work trying to make sure that games were released with quality and polish. And now I'm sitting here uh, lamenting over it. That, That primarily is what Activision Blizzard is doing. Uh, I think it's what most any company would do when there's too many people to do not enough work. Now, I I mean, in a perfect world, Activision Blizzard could make just, hey, let's make new projects for these people to fill. Or we'll train them all to be developers, even though though they didn't want to be developers. I, I don't know. But... As we get some of these, uh, as we get some of this news in, and we see the specifics, I gotta wonder if uh, the community team, uh, the community managers, uh, was that a redundant role? Were they underperforming, or was there not enough investment to make sure that the players' thoughts were being heard? I don't know. Layoffs are never good optics. Well, what is uh, restructuring? That's a sugar-coated word. That's lo- okay. It, it never made anyone feel good. I hear my wife talk about it almost every year, so she can tell her own stories. But as someone who, but as someone who's been down that road, I really feel for everyone who's lost their job today. But as a consumer, I'm not going to let myself get angry over it. I mean, what's the point of that? I mean, I'm oh yeah, I'm going to shit on them, hoping that they fail because they're making big changes in order to not fail. Or I can tell myself stories about billionaire Bobby Kotick and, you know, and and, and this whole thing on trying to cash in, whatever. I have enough time to share this anecdote with you, but I don't have enough time to be consumed by anger over it. But I guess to everyone else who is angry and upset, I'm not going to stop you. Today sucks. And this appears to be the reality that we face in this age of video games. 
But there's still tomorrow and the next day, as long as you want to look forward. I'll see you tomorrow, everyone.